Now, Stuart Rhodes heads up Oath Keepers. He's a constitutional lawyer, worked in Ron Paul's uh, staff as well, um, and, of course, a uh, former Army veteran, a paratrooper who was retired out of the military in a parachuting uh, accident. Uh, and he wrote his thesis in college uh, on the history of basically military dictatorships and America's role and, and, and history in that with Lincoln and Stanton and what, what brought about uh, Posse Comitatus. So we're going to be discussing that history and now how it ties into NDAA. But then I will, before he leaves, I promise we'll get to Rob uh, and uh, Sean uh, and uh, many others that are uh, listening on stations like WJOC 1490 AM uh, in Tennessee. We'll talk to Sean and others that are holding. And I do have some other news I want to get to as well, but to give us a condensed history of it, because those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Stuart Rhodes uh, joins us. Uh, I thought that I would uh, add one more point to this, too. I shot a video. Uh, but you can simply search the term for NDAA is a hoax. You cannot legalize tyranny. Now, tyrants can criminally carry it out if not resisted, both through information warfare, the truth, and physically if you... If your back's against the wall. I mean, Hitler didn't have really the legal standing to go into Poland, but he did. Or to go into France, but he did, because he had people that would follow his criminal orders. Same thing with the Redcoats. Same thing with uh, white abolitionists who were hung by the hundreds for trying to free black slaves. Their argument was, as a Christian, I don't believe that these people are animals, and I think they're free souls and should be free. They called them kooks and nuts and lunatics, but... In the end, their sacrifice came out on top, and that's what scares evil. That's why I always want you to think it's invincible. And so they might try to carry out secret arrest of citizens, disappearing us into black sites, black holes, but it only convicts the establishment as just as bad as we thought they were and verifies everything we've said, and they're basically tattling on themselves. They're confessing in their hubris, in their attempt to intimidate people, they've gone from just lying about New World Order to going, yeah, you bet. Uh-huh. We're spying on patriots. Yeah, we'll arrest you. Yeah, we're getting ready for some new terror attacks we're going to blame on you. I mean, Democrats are putting out all these policy reports saying, gee, Oklahoma sure helped us. A new one's coming, and we're going to arrest everybody. I mean, that's even on Fox News. So now they've moved into kind of a cornered, hissing uh mangy, you know, wolf in a corner snarling at us. The problem is they've put us in a corner. So there's no getting out of this without a fight. The question is, what type of fight will it be? Do we work extra hard now to educate police and military that will be the enforcers of this where the rubber meets the road? Or do we just shoot our mouths off and pile up giant amounts of guns and just say, well, let them come get it? I'd rather work as hard as I can to avert this. And then if it comes, our numbers are that much greater. That's the only sensible course. And so you cannot legalize tyranny. It's very, very simple. And again, he's founder and director of Oath Keeper, served as U.S. Army paratrooper until disabled in a rough terrain parachuting accident during a night jump, former firearms instructor, former member of Ron Paul's D.C. staff. Stewart currently writes the monthly Enemy at the Gates column, or, or did for SWAT magazine. He's a graduate of Yale Law School, where his paper, Solving the Puzzle of Enemy Combatant Status, won Yale's Miller Prize for Best Paper on the Bill of Rights. Uh, and he also uh, has, te has, has taught at the U.S. military history at Yale, was a Yale research scholar, and uh, is also writing a book on the dangers of applying the laws of war to the American people, which has now happened. Oathkeepers.org. Okay, Stuart, let's give people a snapshot of history. But first, let's get into uh, my uh, breakdown. And, and you, uh, would you like to elaborate on that or add well, anything think, to I think, it? Well, I think you're correct. That's, that's, the, that's the response we have to have. I mean, we need to prepare for the very worst. And so, but on the way there, like you said, um, we have a very narrow window of opportunity to raise the awareness of the American people and to do all we can through peaceful means. And while we're doing that, we ex just the same way the founders did, they exhausted all their peaceful means, but they also rallied more people to the cause, won more people over, and, and steeled them up and hardened them and got them ready for uh, the confrontation. And that's what we have to do, both things. 
And and so what I encourage people to do is go look at what Jefferson and Madison did in response to the Alien and Sedition Acts in 1798, which were a gross violation of the First Amendment. They did two things at the same time. One, they nullified. They went to the states and said, you have an obligation to interpose and nullify. Like you said, um, anything contrary to the Constitution is null and void from inception. It is not law. It is nothing. So that's the attitude we have to have. We do not give it any recognition whatsoever. You can say they passed an, an unconstitutional, invalid statute, but it is not lawful. We do not recognize it. That's what Jefferson and Madison did. They didn't go to the federal courts and beg them to recognize that this was a gross violation of the First Amendment. They went to the state legislature and said, you have an obligation. So they know for those who don't know, they tried to bring in tyranny just a few years after our country got on its feet, and the original founders got together and said, lock and load, we're going to try to peacefully back them off, but if they don't, it's another war. Right. It, 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 the Alien Sedition Acts uh, criminalized speech. You had uh, newspaper editors and reporters and writers being arrested for criticizing the president, John Adams, the second president of the United States. And the Federalists were doing this um, during the, the kind of quasi-war with France. So throughout history, it's always during wartime that they try to convince you you must give up your liberty – in the name of fighting the war. And so the Federalists, in the name of fighting the war against the, Fran the French, the undeclared war against the French, um, tried to silence dissent. And so Jefferson and Madison, like I said, they, they, they did two things at once. They, they said it's null and void from inception in the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions. The state stood up. But they also started a whole new political party, and they swept the Federalists out of office in what's now called the Revolution of 1800. They, you know, Jefferson was elected president, and they swept all the Federalists out of Congress. And so that's what we need to do right now in response to this atrocious, unconstitutional, um, intolerable act. So this is our and history of repeats Act. itself. If we didn't have such fraud and modern mind control, undoubtedly he'd be the presumptive nominee. He would defeat Obama. And, and we would see a repeat. We're just in worse states than our founders were. Yeah, Ron Paul is is Jefferson. Um, there, I mean, let me take off my Oath Keeper hat for a second and just say that as an individual, I endorse Ron Paul. As an individual um, veteran of combat arms and airborne, and as, a, as a legal scholar, there is nobody else out there who is going to defend the Constitution like he will. All the rest of them would have been just like McCain, who wrote the NDAA. Obama has, has already committed treason. He's killing American citizens. He's declared himself an elected dictator, essentially. And the rest of them up there, Romney, Gingrich, Santorum, they'd all be the same. So, you know, this is your Jefferson. Ron Paul is the closest thing to a modern Jefferson there is. He's like Jefferson reincarnate. And if you don't vote for him, you are, you are furthering us on that road to having no choice but to fight for our freedom again. Isn't it curious as how many historians and scholars have noted that history repeats? I mean, it doesn't so much repeat as it rhymes. Uh, who was it that said history rhymes? Uh, that was uh, Mark Twain. I mean, it really does go in these cycles. Well, it does, and it's always warfare. If you look at um, after the Alien Sedition Acts, they, they put that genie back in the bottle. They had the, the Peaceful Revolution of 1800 took care of it. But then, you came, then came the Civil War, and it was in the Civil War, in the name again of national security, that Lincoln became essentially an elected dictator. He imprisoned newspaper editors. He imprisoned congressmen. He even wrote a, an arrest warrant out for Chief Justice Taney when, when he um, – balked against his suspension of habeas corpus. So, you know, he just decided he was going to do whatever he wanted to do, and all of his supporters in the Republican Party, the original Republican Party, were all for it. And in the North, this is, this is the precedent. This is the first time that the power of the president as commander-in-chief was used against the American people. He claimed the authority, much like Bush and Obama, he claimed the authority to the, apply the laws of war, not just to the the breakaway southern states that had seceded and become their own country. Um, he also applied the laws of war to northerners. And the Supreme Court in 1866 in the ex parte Milligan case ruled that unconstitutional. But that's a case that came after the war was over. And it doesn't matter, though. The Whenever they're taking over states today, they always go back to what Lincoln did, which in right. the north was undoubtedly classical 
uh, tyranny. I mean, I understand the more sophisticated nuances of the British manipulating the South and all of it. It's it's always a double game. But but undoubtedly, then Stanton after that and executing people extrajudicially. And, and in modern times, they're pointing at that and saying they'll use it against us. Well, exactly. They sweep under the rug the fact that the Supreme Court ruled all of that completely unconstitutional. In Ex parte Milligan, in this case, it was a case of a man who was accused of violating the laws of war. He was a citizen of Indiana. He was a civilian, but he was accused of violating the laws of war. And Lincoln had detained 15,000 American northerners um, under military jurisdiction, and he had tried almost 5,000 of them by military tribunal. And this guy was one of those. And so they, they said, look, the laws of war um, apply to him, and therefore a military tribunal is all he's going to get. That was the argument of the government lawyers. And in fact, they said this to the Bill of Rights. They said, these, in truth, are all peace provisions of the Constitution, and like all other conventional and legislative laws and enactments, are silent amidst arms. Stay there. We're going to be right back. Stuart Rose, we're going to go back to that quote on the other side. This is key. Know your history. Yeah, sometimes Satan. Yeah, the New World Order says they're doing all this to keep us safe. But they're not doing that, are they? You know, Stuart, looking at history, and I want to continue here with you uh, on the history, and then look at what's happening with Ron Paul right now and take some calls. But tyrants behave the same as well. They always have to hire a bunch of people that'll follow any order. So then over a short period of time, the very worst gravitate into the positions of power. And so the tyranny degenerates quickly and always causes a rebellion against it because even the sheep are forced to stand up just for self-preservation. So there's a uh, a wild frenzy that ensues. And we're now seeing just government getting crazier and wilder and more arrogant and frothing by the moment. Uh, please continue. You've gotten up to the Civil War. Right. In, the, in that case about the use of military tribunal against an American citizen in the North, the court, the Supreme Court in 1866 um, the government lawyers argued the exact same thing we're hearing now. They said, um, by the Constitution, as originally adopted, no limitations were put upon the war-making and war-conducting powers of Congress and the president. And then as a fallback, they said, finally, if the military tribunal has no jurisdiction, the petitioner may be held as a prisoner of war aiding with arms the enemies of the United States and held under the authority of the United States until the war terminates, which is exactly the argument that Bush made and Obama and now Congress in the NDAA, the same argument that the powers of the commander-in-chief um, are unlimited. Yeah, if you've got Trump such proof that somebody is aiding a foreign military... Put the proof up. That's why we have trials. Oh, no. Not only will we secretly arrest you, we'll never even have a public trial, and no one must know that we grabbed you. I mean, that that's open tyranny right there. That's always the greatest threat. Well, the Constitution mandates in Article 3, Section 2, that all crimes must be tried by jury. And then Article 3, Section 3, defines the crime of treason. And it defines it as making war against the United States or aiding its enemies. That is the definition of treason. And so today they're circumventing that trial requirement, very plain text of, of the treason clause, and they're circumventing the Bill of Rights just like the Lincoln administration did. Well, let's take that plain reading. If you're waging war or aiding the enemies, the Congress is pretty much globalist run. They actually fit the original treason definition. They're waging they war do. against our Bill of Rights Constitution, our free market, our private property, our sovereignty, our borders. They are the tyrants. They, I don't just say that. They are traitors. They are treasonous. Exactly. Well, they fit the, the exact definition of treason, making war against the American people. They're asserting the power of the president to treat the American people exactly the same as if they were Iraq. Because we're Iraqi. America. I see these newscasts where the government's getting ready to deal with their main threat, us, the American people. What? We're the government. We're the people. Romans 13, we're the government. 
Render unto us. It's our country. Now, I want to, I want to read you what the Supreme Court had to say in 1866. They rejected completely that argument. They said, even these provisions, the Bill of Rights, expressed in such plain English words that it would seem the ingenuity of man could not evade them, are now, after the lapse of more than 70 years, sought to be avoided. Those great and good men foresaw that troublous times would arise when rulers and people would become restive under restraint and seek by sharp and decisive measures to accomplish ends deemed just and proper, and that the principles of constitutional liberty would be in peril unless established by irreparable law. That's what the Bill of Rights is. It's, it's irreparable law. They understood human nature. They understood that people can be driven by fear to give up their freedom. And that's why you have a Bill of Rights that leaves it out of the reach of the people, even when they're afraid. And it's the highest level. Nothing can abridge it because it only enshrines inherent organic rights that are unalienable. That's right. And the Constitution would never have been ratified without the promise of the Bill of Rights. And when you read the preamble to the Bill of Rights, it tells you what its purpose is. It is to prevent misconstruction. It is to prevent abuse of powers granted in the Constitution and prevent misconstruction. And yet, they willfully misconstrue it. Yes. They did it back then. They're doing it now. The Congress and the President are in open treason by the very constitutional definition and of course they're engaged in other criminal activities like fast and furious they are the enemy of america well constitutional lawyer yale scholar veteran I'm a Ron Paul Stafford, founder of OathKeepers.org. Stuart Rhodes is our guest. I want to get to some calls, Stuart, and I want to have you back on for a whole other interview on this subject. But let's continue with the history because these aren't just words we're saying here. Uh, we have a government that is totally illegitimate and has been caught committing so many crimes, it's, it's dizzying for special interest profits. And now they're openly selling, shutting down free speech on the web and, and checkpoints and TSA checkpoints, total federalization, 10th, 9th Amendment violations. Uh, they're not just eating around the edges now. They are in full assault on the heart of every basic liberty, not even our Constitution or Bill of Rights, uh, the, you know, the finest example of it. They are burrowing into Magna Carta. They are annihilating just common sense. They are they are trying to manifest every even absurdist, dystopic cartoonism uh, of tyranny. But but they're, they're setting it up beside us while liberty still is practiced and is ongoing. And the two rails are now going towards a collision course. That's right. That They've created the second track exactly like was done in, in Nazi Germany and Stalinist Russia. And unfortunately, during the Civil War in the United States. And, but the Supreme Court put that genie back in the bottle in 1866. Lincoln opened the, the uh, let the genie loose of martial law, you know, used martial law. The Supreme Court ruled this. Here's what they said. No usage of war could sanction a military trial for any offense whatever of a citizen in, civ in civil life in no wise connected with the military service. Congress could grant no such power, and the honor of our national legislature be it said, it has never been provoked by the state of the country even to attempt its exercise. The, even in the Civil War, the U.S. Congress didn't, apply, didn't try to authorize military trial. So the, the current Congress has gone even further than, than what they did during the Civil War. So one of... The court said one of the plainest constitutional provisions was therefore infringed when Milligan was tried by a court not ordained and established by Congress and not composed of judges appointed during good behavior. In other words, not an Article Three court, not a jury trial. And so and this is what happened then is precisely the same thing that's happening now, and it's also exactly what the founders faced. You look at the Declaration of Independence, they list among the grievances is denial of jury trial and also 
um, the, the attempt to impose upon them a juris- jurisdiction foreign to their constitution. And back then, what Parliament had done is they passed statutes that expanded the jurisdiction of the admiralty courts as a way to strip the colonists of their ancient right to jury trial. And the exact same thing is being done here again. So what happens as the crooks, who admittedly, you know, they get caught insider trading, so Congress says, well, it's legal for us to because we say so. Again, another pure tyrant statement, uh, the pure the fewer precept that I'm the leader, I can do whatever I want. What happens as it becomes manifest that it is illegitimate, it is fraudulent, it's got a gaggle of, uh, of criminals posing as media, deceiving and dissembling the truth over the public. They've seized the infrastructure. They're accelerating the dismantling of the country. They're demonizing Americans who actually know that they're the enemy and foreign and illegitimate. And it's all hurtling towards uh, confrontation. And the enemy knows that we're now awake to them. And instead of just being hubris filled, is scrabbling quickly to try to uh, man the parapets against us uh, I mean, as the economic collapse accelerates. Well, they understand it's a two-way window. Like you've said for a long time, it goes both ways. It's a two-way window. They understand that the more extreme they get and the more illegitimate they get, the more the curtains pull back and we see the little man behind the curtain. We realize how illegitimate and fraudulent he is. And so they're, they're taking the mask off, but in many ways that's helping us. The NDAA is a gift to the freedom movement. I mean, they were already claiming these powers. Both Bush and Obama already used these powers. Bush detained two American citizens, you know, Jose Padilla and Yasser Hamdi, and Obama just starts killing American citizens. So they're already doing it anyway. So I like the fact that they were brazen enough to put it right there in black and white in a congressional statute because now it's waking Americans up. Finally. I mean, I've been saying this for since 2001. I've been screaming about this, and it was hard to get anybody to listen to it. But now they understand that they are destroying the Bill of Rights. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's right in their face. And so it's a tool for us to wake them up. So, But, but getting back to the history real quick, after that attempt – to apply the laws of war after that usage was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in 1866. It was never used again until 1942 during World War II by FDR. There were eight German saboteurs that came ashore. One of them claimed to be a U.S. citizen. They were captured and tried by tribunal. Um, and the court in that case, in ex parte Quarren, um, the same New Deal court that found it okay to intern the Japanese Americans, over 100,000 U.S. citizens, the same court that gave FDR everything else he wanted in the New Deal, unrestrained power. They ruled that the citizenship of the saboteur was irrelevant. They ruled that what counted, so, so the court said, was what he was accused of doing. So because he was accused of violating the laws of war, the court ruled that he would get a military tribunal rather than a jury trial. So they totally up, upturned the ex parte Milligan decision from 1866. They totally ignored the treason clause and violated the Constitution grossly. And that is the precedent that after that was not used again until post 9-11. And that's the precedent <laughs> ex parte Quarren, that the Bush administration reached back to from 1942 and grabbed it and said, hey, look, we can do whatever we want, even to American citizens. But let's, but let's get lie. to the heart of this. We're told this is done to stop al-Qaeda, who's been given Libya, who's being used to attack Iran, all on record. And when you get all the internal documents and the MIAC and Homeland Security reports and all the rest of it, it's admitted, as you know, but for the audience and maybe new listeners, that it's all about conservatives, libertarians, patriots, Oath Keepers, Ron Paul, Bob Barr, Alex Jones, filmmakers. It's clearly an attack on the American people. And they're training the police for this. None of it has to do with the, you know, the Arab terrorists you know, that, that they were first selling. So they always sell on an unpopular minority, just like Hitler did. Then it's expanded onto everyone. And it's just so transparent. We've got to get that message out. But I mean, constitutionally. Obviously, it's a Tenth Amendment, Ninth Amendment because of jurisdiction, and then it's a Fourth Amendment. But all over the country now, they're having federally run, and there's a new one. If you read the fine print, the Orange County Register is reporting on this. We can put it on screen. Police use a roadblock to gather serial killer information. In the last few months, three homeless have been stabbed 
in a town. So they go out on a highway, and it shows video of it, shut down the highway and ask people if they saw anything. I mean, this is completely random, makes no sense. And, and it's the feds running it. It turns out it's basically a TSA icebreaker of why they're setting up unconstitutional checkpoints. And But many other areas, they even dispense with that. They just actually just pull you out of your car and search it. Uh, but, but, I mean, you can clearly see them testing the perch. You can see them, you know, really trying. Oh, the Army's here to help search your car for alcohol. Oh, the Marines are here. You know, now we see the military on the streets. I mean, they're really, and, and that's the proof of the criminality, is that they're doing it incrementally by design to acclimate everyone involved. Yeah, exactly. Like like you said, it was just like what they did in Nazi Germany. The Reichstag fire decree was the reaction to the burning of the legislature, and it was aimed, supposedly aimed, at the communists. But then they immediately expanded it out from there to trade unionists and then to Jews and on down the line. And the same thing is, is, is going to happen here. It's happening right now. The demonization, as you said, is targeted at constitutionalists, targeted at you know veterans, targeted at at, at – at, uh, at conservatives and libertarians. And one thing people need to understand is that there was a, a, a law review article written back in 1996, right after Oklahoma City, where two lawyers argued that the laws of war should be used against McVeigh to try him by military tribunal. And they also said that Clinton should use the laws of war against the militia movement. And they cited to the ex parte Quarren case from 1942, and they argued that it should be updated and used against terrorist suspects. And so that is precisely what they argued and, and wanted is what has now been put in place first by the Bush administration. And so the original idea of using the laws of war against terrorism was actually first thought of about it to be used against right-wing um, domestic terrorists and right-wing radicals. That was the first um, proposed use during the Clinton administration, but Clinton didn't do it. But Bush then did what Clinton did not do. He updated that, that old 1942 case and applied it to the so-called war on terror. And so now – what Clinton did not have in, 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 at his fingertips, Bush put in place, and now Obama has, like the Ring of Power out of the Lord of the Rings. It's right there on his desk. Whenever he wants to, he can grab it and use it. And, and, and notice he went through all these different manipulations where, oh, he it didn't affect citizens, but then it did affect citizens. But uh, don't worry, we won't uh, use it against uh, citizens. But, oh, he's going to veto it, so it's okay. And then he does sign it. I mean, it's they're using laws of war against us. We're, we're the enemy, and it's all deception. But look at this article. Police use roadblock to gather serial killer information. If you scroll down to the video on the Orange County Register, it shows a major highway shut down. And people pull up to FBI with clipboards demanding they answer questions. I mean, this is clearly just turning everything into the TSA. And then they use uh, an excuse to sell the public on it, we're trying to get a serial killer. No, they're not. They know full well this isn't how you find a serial killer. I mean, it's just all about them seizing the roads, seizing the infrastructure, and training us that they will stop us when they want, and we will answer their questions when they want. I mean, again, this is an FBI that ships guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. This is a government uh, that is terrorist. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, Stuart, what would you do if you just pull up to a checkpoint with the FBI out of their jurisdiction uh, on a major highway in the middle of California uh, in Orange County uh, in Anaheim demanding to basically, you know, answer their ghoulish questions? I mean, it's just it's so sick. These people are so sick. And of course, well, you have to you have to refuse. We have to use civil disobedience and you have to nullify as individuals. We have to start refusing and, and withdrawing our consent and something else that happened again happen. it's this idea that if anything could ever kill you we've got to have checkpoints there so oh my gosh three homeless have been stabbed to death here and so we'll just start shutting down the entire area and making you all prisoners i mean do people see this is the perfect excuse to take over everything and that the military industrial complex is eating america right now well i think more americans are waking up to the fact and, and like I said, that's, that's what's good about this is the more they 
overstep. And the more they do this, the more it wakes us up. But we have to, if we wait too long to fix this, then we will become acclimated. It's a choice between becoming the Fourth Reich. You know, are we 1934 Germany where they just quietly went along with it and, and, and sat down and shut up because they were afraid of being jailed? Um, or are we 1774 America in the spirit of 76? You know, that's what we have to choose. Yeah, and let's I expand on that. 76. I mean, let's expand on that. This is the entire acclimation program. And they really want to get us ready for checkpoints everywhere. So you're on a pickup list and you don't know and you pull up and they grab you and you disappear. Right. And, and I want to warn the police and others. I mean, once it goes to this level, uh, you're not going to have a very safe job. I'll tell you right now. And That's right. Well, you know, I've, I've talked to veterans already across the country and they all say the same thing. They say, well, how do I know if I get pulled over by a police officer? How do I know it's a normal police stop? That is not some black bag thing that will be turned over to the Department of Defense and taken off to Guantanamo. And my answer now is, well, you know, right now they probably won't do that, but that's where we're headed. And like you said, once the first one is detained like that, every other veteran or every other American out there is going to be like, well, hey, I will not know. I'm going to assume the worst, and I'm going to resist. And a lot of them already told me that, that when that day comes and they see that they're actually in danger of being black bagged, they will not allow themselves to be handcuffed, um, even by a police officer, because they will not know. Because the government be is illegitimate. I mean, again, but look at these quotes. Almost every comment uh, here in the Orange County, and there's hundreds of them, what a dumb idea, really a roadblock. Most people driving in Orange County have no clue to who is actually sitting next to them in a vehicle, let alone uh, clues to who uh, you know, some bum was you know, hacked to death uh, in a dirty riverbed miles away. Here's another one. Uh, it, uh, it goes on. Civil rights violation. This sounds like Nazi checkpoint with regular citizens having no rights. Do our police really believe they have gathered this much power that they can just start doing this? Yeah, their bosses who are criminals tell them to do this. This is perch testing. Uh, it goes on. Complete violation of Terry versus Ohio. Uh, and here's a minion. Kudos to the special task force. You're on. You're out in the community trying to get things done. Good job, guys. She probably works in the county. Your ignorance of your rights could not be more complete. Terror management theory at its best. And it just goes on with the comments. Uh, almost no one buying uh, any of this information. It seems to me that they are stopping people with hope of raising revenue. Yeah, they did do some arrest and sticker tickets while they were at it. It was all just a sickening excuse under federal ghoul control. I guess the feds weren't busy shipping guns out and little kids out of the country. It goes on to say, I do not think that they will uncover much stopping many people because they are uh, in the area. Maybe I'm wrong. Is this even legal, a random checkpoint to interview potential witnesses? Seriously, no Fourth Amendment issues here. And it just goes on and 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 on. The good news is, Stuart, we're not buying it, are we? No, and, and, and more Americans across the country are not buying it. And that's, that's why we are different than the Germans. That's why it will not go the same way as Germany, that just slid into a dark tyranny with a little whimper we will not go that what path. about three million guns uh, 1.5 million plus instant checks in the month of december alone breaking all records i mean there aren't even liberals anymore in this country that that know how to talk i mean so-called liberals are all buying weapons and everything i mean they're i mean what does the new order think they've done Stuart? every liberal i know is arming to the teeth and is waking up and we just had um, el paso county colorado pass a resolution against the ndaa um, nullifying it. And that's what has to happen across the country. And, and in fact, I'm going to a meeting this weekend in Topeka, Kansas, where we're bringing legislators and activists in from all over the country, and we're going to draft um, model resolutions and build on what was already done in, in El Paso County, Colorado, and, and spread the message of nullification at the local level, towns, counties, and states. Yeah, it's happening. And, uh, you know, the feds can say, well, that, that, we nullify that. No, we nullify you. You work for offshore banks. You individually may not be a criminal, but you work for a system that's run by criminals. The heads of your organizations are mafia, organized crime, scum. You are illegitimate, and the republic is rising. We veto you.
do a little bit of overdrive so I can get to the callers that have been holding the longest, like Rob and Sean and others. Uh, Stuart Rose is our guest. But look at another one of these comments here on the Orange County Register where they have giant Fed-run checkpoints searching and demanding answers from people about a serial killer miles away in some ravine stabbing homeless people weeks after. Uh, one of the commenters, Rick Moreno, says, if you have any information, don't call. You might get, a, he, he mentions local police, you might get a better response calling Anaheim or the FBI. I called um, the, the town more than three weeks ago when the video came out of the bank robbers asking for any information that someone might have. I left three messages for two different detectives and never did they call me back or even a thank you, even though my info was good. Now, now, folks, I've called the Homeland Security numbers on air that they have on TV if there's terrorists. No one ever calls you. Or if you say, I know where terrorists are, they're like, okay, name and number. They never call you. I mean, I know that the heads of Al-Qaeda meet at the Pentagon. I have all the documents. And they're just like, mm-hmm. But even, even if you just say, I have information on terrorists, they don't call you back. It's all fake, and they know it. They know it. Austin's got tens of millions of dollars in the last decade you know, on million-and-a-half-dollar robots, and they go out once a week and blow up a cardboard box on the highway and ninny. And it's just all about milking us. It's just a total scam and a state of fear while the criminal city council robs everyone. I'm sorry, Stuart Rhodes' comments on this. Well, you're right. It, it's, it's, it's like a disease, like a cancer that has, that has spread, metastasized and spread. And it's the same thing the founders faced, right? A, 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 uh, a swarm of officers sent out to eat away at their substance. I mean, everything that we're experiencing, they experience. That's why we should call people who, who want checkpoints and all of that should be called loyalists and they should be given, we should give them red coats as, as gifts. Um, and that's their that's their badge because that's what they really are. They have they have rejected the the republic. They've rejected the concept of freedom. They want to live like a third world dictatorship, like North Korea. Um, they should just go there because and we should just call them what they are. You know, they're totalitarians. They're they're loyalists. They they would have been perfectly at home um, being a Tory back in 1775 and calling for the military trial of, of the American colonists and, and the rebels and calling for the arrest of John Hancock and, and Sam Adams and stuffing them away in a, in a military brig. So that's what they are. Or putting them on a prison ship to starve to death. Rob in Pennsylvania, right. you're on the air. Go ahead. Very riveting, very riveting discussion, and I was uh, happy to hold and listen through it. Um, I'd like to get to my points very quickly. Um, Francis and Friends is a, uh, a show normally hosted by uh, uh, Francis Swagger, Jimmy Swagger's wife. It's on the Sunlight Broadcasting Network, and I happened to be listening uh, over the web. And yesterday, uh, Donnie Swagger, her son, was hosting. And on uh, the show, he falsely proclaimed that Ron Paul is, quote-unquote, not a Christian and does not know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and characterized Ron Paul as anti-Israel and pro-Muslim. Well, is that because Ron Paul doesn't visit uh, low-rent prostitutes? <laughs> and uh, today's show was just as bad uh, with Donnie Swagger characterizing Dr. Paul as a fruitcake and an alien from another planet. Well, look, I don't know about all those guys, but the whole system is attacking Ron Paul. What does that tell you? That's exactly right, and I'd like to I'd like to say that I did my incremental part by uh, posting these videos on YouTube under uh, under the title "Donnie Swagger Falsely Proclaims Dr. Paul Not a Christian," and there was another instance where Francis Swagger was hosting a show. And she called you a traitor, Alex, uh, wherein she uh, said that uh, she characterized you as a traitor for uh, discussing America's problems with RT and basically equating uh, you going on RT with you traveling to Russia. <laughs> I know that's a neocon outfit. They've been, I know there's some other groups been calling for my arrest because I do British and French and Japanese TV. I mean, it's just, they're just, they're loyalist traitors and they don't want me talking about the Republic. Um, but uh, whatever, I haven't heard those little discredited people, so good, good for them. We're looking at how tyrants always operate, Stuart, and they always say people that are criticizing them work for a foreign power, and they've got to take your rights and clap you in irons 
uh, because you're not a patriot, but we're the people actually defending America and what made the country great. And it's so simple. We're fighting global banks that take over countries and then use false nationalism to play our countries off against each other. Uh, what would you say to the last caller before I go to uh, Sean? No, I've heard the same allegations made against you and also Ron Paul. I mean, Congressman Paul was a Christian. I, I used to work with the man. I used to work for him. And I can tell you that that's, you know, he's a, he's a very principled, um, pro-life Christian. Um, but he's a constitutionalist also, and, and he stands on the Constitution. And that's what all of these Roman 13s, uh, twisting, obedient, loyalist, fake Christians don't like. They want obedience. They want submission, absolute submission to the state. That's why there's a really great book out right now by Chuck Baldwin on Romans 13 that I recommend. Yeah, we've had him on about it. it. Yeah, it's great. So you need to – that's the that's the, that's the the antidote to all that nonsense. But there are loyalists. There are loyalists. Well, look, most of these churches are 501c3, and the feds tell them, you promote our agenda or you're going to lose it. They have the clergy response teams. I mean, it's like in China, the communists have a loyal church they allow to operate. It's the same thing. That's right. That's right. So, you know, the best way to, the best way to handle them is to boycott them like the founders did. Shun them. Boycott them. That's right. I mean, I see police now, and I walk over in a restaurant, whatever, and I say, how are you guys doing? Where do you stand on the Constitution and the Republic? And they say, well, we stand with it. I go, good job, and shake their hand. But they act weird. I go, oh, it's weird for a citizen to come over and talk to you. You ought to ask yourselves why you think that's weird. You ought to ask yourselves why, why me, the little slave, talking to you is weird. How has America gotten so weird that we're not supposed to communicate with each other? And it's time to get out of your shells, folks, or be put in a cell. It's time to get out of the shell or be put in a cell. Either hang together, hang separate. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Sean in Tennessee, listening on WJOC, 1490 AM in Tennessee. Go ahead. Alex, I love your show. I'm glad I finally get you here in Chattanooga. We have so needed this kind of information for a very long time now. I mean, you are truly appreciated here for all you do on this program to fight these globalists. Thank I'm you. God serious. bless you. And, and you're truly appreciated. And I'm also a big supporter and regular listener to another one you might be very familiar with on GCN, quite familiar with Pastor Butch Paul. Oh, great guy. Need to get yeah. him on. And he fights these exact same people you just mentioned, the 501c3s. And But I have a question, if you don't mind, I, that relates to a super technology that the government uses to control the ionosphere and jet streams and weather patterns. Talking, about, yeah, talking about HARP? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I... Uh, I wonder, is this same technology used to possibly control people or political dissidents? Well, yeah, that, that, I mean, they wouldn't use the big antennas for that, but they've got patented little small psychotronic things that they've used. There's actually been treaties on that with the Euro, the U.S., and Russia not to use it from 1979. Stuart, you want to uh, get into any of the uh, secret of weapons that you've read about or anything? Um, I mean, all I, all I really know about is the same thing you've heard about. I don't really know much beyond that. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of these super high-tech weapons and stuff, it's all just bravada. It's all a system trying to, look, the people that win wars are the people that don't stop fighting and who have right on their side. Okay, tyrants never succeed when people stand up against them. Take Gandhi. He spent 30 years just getting the Indians to have respect for themselves and to learn to stand up. And when they stood up, there was nothing the British Empire could do. Closing comments on that, Stuart Rhodes. Thank you so much, uh, Sean. Well, that's absolutely correct. I mean, I mean, that's the that's the great secret that they don't want you to realize. The truth is that you are, in the end, you hold all the power in your hands, and 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 you includes the military and police. And that's why I started Oath Keepers because they can't do it without them. And so that's why we should look towards. What happened in 1989 in East Germany, like Gunter Spence talked about on your show, a mass stand down and a mass stand up by the people. You know what, Stuart? I've already got a guest on the nightly news tonight, but we, we might want to, either today or tomorrow, tape more about the police and the military's choice, because that's the most important part of this discussion, and I didn't even get into that. Maybe we should tape it, put it on the news tonight, and then air it tomorrow on the radio, part two. I'll, I'll talk to you here at the end. Stay with us. Uh, retransmission coming up now.